So this is the Central Business Architecture Committee meeting on Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. Um, are there any members of the public that are joining us today? Um, no. Okay. So then I will take it that there's no public comment on anything. Um, and this is a continued discussion of the draft form-based code and the Central Business Architecture Committee guidelines. And uh, so I open it up for discussion. How, how, what's the best way to go through this, Carolyn? Um, so I guess, um, you know, I know we had at our last discussion, um, you know, I think there were two, um, two sort of um, issues. One was um, the boundary of the core district versus the side street district that I think that you all wanted to um, discuss a little bit more. And then also sort of how to weave in and make consistent language between the guidelines and the code and sort of whether or not we duplicate things um, from one document to the other or um, to um, just um, not duplicate and just refer to one and the other in each document. And the way that I think that would work would be to, um, uh, I mean, I think you could do both of those. I think you could have it that way, but so, and then in the intervening time, I had sent um, um, the draft guidelines in sort of worked up form and sort of had questions about whether what you thought if we were to merge the documents, what could be stripped from the guidelines because they're already covered in the um, form-based code and whether you think that was sufficient. So I guess if we start by, uh, we can start with either the text or the map, whichever one you all want to start with to tackle, um, and then move to the other one and just um, um, talk about making sure that you feel like the um, the um, code uh, makes sense in relationship to the guidelines. Can Can I um, weigh in here for a second? Um, I spent some time. Um, looking at the code and the guidelines. And basically the code is just, is a really, I think, good de effort to define the guidelines in more detail so that people understand them better. And the only thing that really was missing from the code that was in the guidelines was a discussion of materials, which evidently because it's in zoning is not able to be discussed in a um, in a code in in the code. Um, but I uh, um, I think that um, it would make sense to to adopt or or to recommend that city council adopt the code and then just put a. Um, uh, something in there that says for guidance on materials, see the um, former guidelines that were used. I don't know if that can be, if that makes sense or not, but um, I, I, don't, I don't think, um, I'm basically, the, I thought the code was really good, um, fill in, filled in description of what the guidelines were trying to get at. Although the you know the guideline thing did have the the pictures of this and not that were useful in the in the guidebook the old guidebook which didn't have didn't occur so much in the in the new code. I guess I want to throw out there that um, as as someone who has to look at codes and guidelines that. Um, clarity is really important and to if you're describing something to describe it in one place 
So if we feel like the new code does a good job describing the majority of our guidelines, then I would say anything that's in our guidelines that is described in the code be taken out of our guidelines so that we're not duplicating information anywhere and there's no reason for any kind of discrepancy or confusion for people who are looking at both documents. I would agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree as well a lot. I think clarity and like paths to approvals need to be really clear for folks. Did you all get a chance to, uh, so I sent you the guidelines marked up. I've actually made a few more changes when I've, as I've added, I finally, I got the list of buildings with the photos um, um, and I put those in there, but did you all have a chance to sort of think about the sections that would be deleted? And I had redlined, you know, possible sections where I think there was that overlap um so it sounds like if that's the direction you all want to go um you know i can strip that from the guidelines and just leave sort of the context of why we have the guidelines and also create reference back to the code so that when you're reviewing um you know that and whoever is trying to apply for a project in the um that needs um a review by this body that they know where to connect and link um, directly between the two. Yeah, Carolyn, did anyone send you comments from our board? I got comments from Joe, um, basically, and he summarized um, generally um, just now. And so it's so goofy. I actually spent two hours on it and then I just opened up my copy and I didn't find any of my comments. I don't think I saved it. So that, that wasn't on Google Drive, right? You, you never saw those notes. No, I did not put it on Google Drive. Did you, are you in the review mode on, are you, did you do it in Word? No, I kept it in PDF and then I would put a little comment on it and then I would, yeah. And I saved a copy. I saved a copy for myself and then I just saved it wrong, I think, or didn't save it. Is it maybe in your downloads folder? Yeah, I'll check. That's a good idea. I I, I read through everything, but because I was I didn't participate and I could I wasn't able to last time, I didn't want to. I, I wanted to be at this meeting before I even said anything because I think it was this is too important, you know, I can't even remember, you know, I mean, COVID has messed up everybody's timeline and everything. I can't remember when we even started this. I, I don't know if it was three or four <laughs> years ago, but yeah. at least that long ago. And, um, and now they're doing this It's a huge change and we're dealing with stuff that, you know, began in the what mid or early nineties. And, you know, we need to make sure it's correct. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to make any comments because of that. So I apologize. I couldn't have been there last time. Yeah. Um, do you want me to pull? So what, uh, Melissa, what do you remember sort of where you made, did you make your comments in a certain section that you recall or was it sort of all throughout or yeah thanks for thanks for asking i um i know i got carried away with things i shouldn't have gotten carried away so the, a lot of that i would say a third of my comments weren't necessary but i did find one and i don't even know exactly i was referencing like let me see if i could find it again because i think i was going between this document and maybe another one, maybe our guidelines. I think that's what I was going back and forth. And I was, oh, I was looking at, I think you're planning, um, uh, 
the standards. I think that's what I was comparing it with a few times. I, I did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I lost it. I can go over it quickly, but I mean, if you're going to give us another chance, I completely understand um, Elena's suggestions, you know, make the one because that's typically, you know, architects, that's what they do. They like to only have things in there once. So there's no redundancy and no confusion. And accounting too, as, <laughs> you know, same thing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know if we get another shot at this and I could go through it again, but you know, you could tell me what your plan is. Yeah. I mean, so, um, I think that what I could do, I mean, I, right now the form based code is, um, being reviewed by the city solicitor. We're hoping that it gets finished by the end of February so we can introduce to council in early March. Um, but you all have a March 1st meeting. Um, and we could do, you know, one more like at the end of the agenda, we could also come back to this if and and then that would give you time maybe to regenerate some of your comments and then the committee can talk about it. Um, in the meantime, I could also sort of send you the stripped down version of what the guidelines would look like with everything back in the. And I didn't, um, I've done that, but I didn't want to send it to you and confuse <laughs> the committee. Like I just wanted, I also didn't want to assume that's what you wanted to do. So it's not going to take a lot of effort for me to, you know, send that out um, back to you. And I don't know. I mean, here's another um, piece. Did, does it make sense? Joe suggested that, you know, we keep the examples of what the, um, you know, what the um, guidelines are trying to achieve by showing what's a good example and what's a bad example. Do you think that's valuable to keep in the guidelines? Um, or do you think that is that the form-based code piece has enough graphic representation of what's intended without those examples? Because, you know, I could go ahead and strip that piece out too, but I don't want to do that if um, you all think it's important to keep in there. Yeah, I think um, I'm with Bridget, you know, maybe Joe, Elaine, Elena, and, or Elaine and um, Bob can give feedback on that because they're the, they've they been on the committee longer um, as far as taking things out of the original guidelines, you know, their, their input would be um, greater. My, my feeling would be if, if it would not cause confusion to have the picture stay in the guidelines, I, I think they're useful um, and could be useful to somebody who was planning this, but if it would cause confusion, and I think I really think that the code that you put together that you put together does a very good job of defining what we're after as good a, a job as it as could be done, I think so if if you don't think it would cause confusion, leave the pictures in it Elon I you know, I maybe would defer to your judgment on this because you're the architect that, but uh, um, you know, I, I, I would so, be comfortable. Well, go ahead. I, I, I would say that it's nice to see some of the photos, um, especially when there's an architect from out of town who may not actually even come to Northampton or have had the opportunity to explore the architecture in Northampton. I mean, it is, it's not so unique that you can't find it in other New England towns. Um, but I guess we like to think that it's pretty special. Um, maybe it doesn't have to, I know that um, at some point you had tried to like make a matrix almost of some of the buildings. Um, so I'm With their photos. Yeah, with the little thumbnail photos. Yeah, 
So that's the piece that I was able to get an intern to finish for me, like putting all those photos in the matrix. So that piece is done. It's not, it's only like a little sample is in the document I sent you. Um, but that is done. So um, I'm trying to figure out, I mean, that's because the thumbnail size, um, you know, it's several pages. Uh, so I haven't quite decided whether that should be a link or um, or just embedded as part of the document. Um, I, I kind of have to see. Actually, when I take out all the guidelines, it might be it might not be that big of a document anyway. I just think that you know, from my perspective and in, in dealing with developers, you know, um, and you know, some of them are larger than others, and and some of them have bigger budgets than others. You know, to, to have something as, you know, as simple as this, not this, you know, is, you know, you might be dealing with somebody that's just there as an intern. And um, it's, as, um, as we all know, I mean, you guys were, you know, in the meetings that I had to recuse myself with, uh, you know, my, my father's building on King Street, you know, that, um, you know, may be uh, demolished, but, you know, what it was before and what it is now and, and those kinds of things, but also the hall of records and those um, examples, I think are, are really good examples to have going forward. And for somebody that is really a, uh, that's helping out at a either uh, unpaid position or, you know, um, we're really, you know, learning, uh, you know, um, an educational position, I think that it's kind of, especially, well, it's even historical. Um, I think it's, it's good to keep, um, but that's my two cents. Okay. Well, unless anybody says otherwise, I'll go ahead and do that and I'll paste the, those thumbnails in too and then send it out, send it back to you all um, sort of for one, you know, other one, um, review in March. That doesn't mean it's the end of the conversation. Obviously, it's that starts the official public hearing process. Um, so if things come up that you think of, you know, in our subsequent meetings, and it's not too late to interject them into the public hearing process, you know, that's also um, an option. The idea really was to get as much of it, you know, this is really the place where it can be massaged easily. Um, before it gets introduced as a formal ordinance to city council. So um, that's why I think it's good for you all to sort of get your hands in and, and figure out you know, what makes sense. So um, I can do that on the text. Were there any other comments about the text document? Um, so I have a I question. I have a question about how um, you know, just trying to conceptually think about someone coming before us and we have our document, which I would see now as a supplement to the form-based code mm -hmm. for, for the central, central business district or however yeah. we're now calling it. Um, and do we have jurisdiction or do we are we the ones who make comments on whether or not it's meeting the form based code or is now that only through um, the planning board so for the core the way it would work is someone applies for a new building let's say next to Fitzwillies mm -hmm. um, the um, the, you all would have jurisdiction over um, evaluating conformance with the code and the guidelines. Are you the talking planning about construction? Brand wanted, new construction, brand wanted, new building. All right, thanks. Um, and the planning board would be also having jurisdiction, but they're going to be looking more at the site piece of it. So there are a lot of elements about parking and landscaping that are part of the form-based code. Um, they also would re review buildings, but I think in that situation, you know, they would rely much more heavily on the central business architecture 
com uh, committee to evaluate the component uh, components of the building. If it were no footprint expansion, but a completely new reno uh, renovation, modification to facades or a small addition, then it would just be central business architecture that would review it and not the planning board. Um, it's uh, only... Can I jump oh, in for ahead, a moment? Bob. Yeah, first I want to apologize. I was, I, I was really having a hard time getting online. This stuff makes me crazy. Um, but the form-based code, isn't it a lot more thorough and restrictive than our guidelines? I mean, reading through it, it's very dense. Is, isn't that true? That it virtually incorporates all of our guidelines? It does incorporate most all of the guidelines. It's not, and, and so I guess from a perspective of saying, is it more thorough? I think it's more thorough in the areas that are not currently zoned central business. So it sort of expands very similar criteria, if not the same criteria into a, a bigger area. Um, but, um, and it's very specific in order to, to create a, um, a path forward for applicants to know exactly what's going to be expected, but also for the planning board to be able to utilize that and understand what should be provided. So, but it, it but it's, and I think it does a better, you know, it's an update of the graphics and explains more uh, and in clear fashion um, of, all, of the guidelines, many of the guidelines that you already had. Well, it seems to me, I mean, we've been doing this as a group for a while regarding the construction of the buildings downtown. Uh, outside of our district, I find it hard to believe that the planning board is going to be able to go through all the construction details in the form-based code for a thorough review, review. I mean, they're more dealing with site issues. Uh, do you really think that all the planning board is going to understand these form-based codes and follow through with them on every application? I mean, I do, I don't, I can't say to a T that every board member will, but the board is comprised of people from all, um, you know, professions. And so we do have architects, we do have um, builders, we do have contractors. Um, so I think they'll be, and we have engineers. Um, so I think as with any committee, it's gonna be a mix of people. It also may be that we want to assign a slot um, to the planning board for someone so that it's not happenstance that we have engineers and architects and um, building trades people on the board. Um, but we've always, um, we've tended to have at least two or three people who um, represent those professions on the planning board. But virtually, I mean, so when we get a new application, will we, we also go into detail of the form-based code as well as our own guidelines? Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's quite a, there's quite a few mentions in the form-based code of referring to us. Right. So. I think it's useful, useful to think of the, the form-based code is really just defining our guidelines in a much more clear and objective way than the, than the was originally done in our guidelines. Um, but what Bob brings up is the transition to the other issue is that, you know, we are, our specialty is really how does the building look? It's not the planning board specialty. And so that's, that's another issue that is, is important to the discussion of where the boundaries are, are going to be. Bef before we go to that, could I, just say there was one thing in the form-based code thing that I um, that caught my eye, namely it used the Smith Art Building as an example of something desirable in, um, or the, not the art building, the museum, the art museum, 
there's a huge blank wall there that was presented in a positive way that should have been presented in a negative way. And I, I would not want to see that particular example used as, as something that would be acceptable in the central business district. I remember talking about that last time, and I think you said you were going to take it out, but I just want to make sure that that um, isn't used as a positive example. Um, yeah, I don't, I think it's, it's not necessarily intended to be used as a positive example, but if that, if, it, if that's the way it's being relayed, um, you know, it certainly doesn't meet the guidelines in terms of the blank wall standards. Um, it's really there to show that those types of buildings sometimes can't meet the standards for as a commercial, a typical commercial building might, or that it's, you know, has some other features about it. This is a minor point. Uh, Carolyn, I noticed uh, in the form-based codes, um, there was a restriction on mansards under the roof. And in our guidelines, it's still allowed. Did you notice that? It's just like one line somewhere. Yeah, I mean, we, we um, specifically took, I mean, yes, that was intentional. <laughs> Um, I mean, do we and, not allow them with our, do we not, we won't not allow them in our district, but they're allowed in the rest of the, the, the form-based code areas? Well, I think the issue is that you're seeing a lot of roof. And so um, that is the idea is that you're not, that the roof doesn't become the prominent feature right. along the street. Um, and I'm just wondering also, is it, is it a, a building inspector issue too? Like, is it, is it because then, you know, it's, it's, it tends to be a flat, flatter surface. And then, you know, obviously this, this, um, climate isn't conducive to that unless it's done appropriately. I'm just, that's what my, my question was to that too. So I'm glad you brought that up, Bob. Because you, you see a lot of like, not in Northampton, but like I, I've noticed in like in Europe a lot, you see a lot of four or five story row buildings that the fifth floor is a mansard and with, you know, your dormers in it. And that would meet the requirements in the form based code about the one and one third ratio of roof to lower building. Yeah, so I, I mean, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I just going to answer Bridget's question. It, it should, it would not be a, a structural issue for this, as long as it's designed appropriately. All right. We have, we have lots of flat roofs. Yeah, no, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm thinking about more like retrofitting because I, I sold a house last year on Pomeroy Terrace that, you know, it's, a, it, and it had that and she'd had issues and, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> blah 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 <laughs> there you go yeah it has to be detailed correctly but it's not an issue right for exactly but there you go that's the story of a realtor <laughs> um in terms of that you know i can think of one particular example where that's a that's a good representation of why we want to prohibit them in downtown and it's, I don't know, Alain, you probably know the year better than I do, but it's probably a 70s, 60s or 70s building. And I, the issue is, is again, it's not, it's not that it, I mean, with the, Bob, I'd have to say, I would agree with you, a five story with dormers on a mansard is very different than just a mansard with no, yes. um, you know, differentiation along the, that, face. Um, and that's really the issue. I will also say that the planning board can waive these criteria if it can be shown that you can meet. So if someone came in with a mansard roof and it was, you know, um, divided up with dormers and it was a multifamily building and 
and it meant, like you said, sort of the, the ratio, um, that might be a good case why the planning board or you all might want to waive those standards. Um, but it's in, intended to say, let's shy away from that because for the most part, people aren't creating those types of mansards anymore. Um, and so it's not probably appropriate for downtown Northampton. Mm -hmm. But if you feel strongly that that's not the case, that's why you're here. <laughs> it can say, no, you guys are wrong. Let them, let them come in. <laughs> Mansards everywhere. <laughs> right. Now, also, uh, in the revised, our revised guidelines that you were editing, uh, there was, I don't have it right on my screen here, but you had highlighted a lot of things in red that you were going to delete in the guidelines. And yeah. it was like, there was two groups of those. And one of them like was almost every guideline you were eliminating, it looked like. Can, can you bring that up, Carolyn? Because the guidelines that I have for some reason don't show that. I don't know if that's because I'm, I don't know why it's not showing that. Okay, so let me just go back. So the reason why I put the deletions in, the, oh, let me just, let me see if my review all is up. Okay. Um, I just wanna make sure I'm looking at the right one. Well, I think this is the one that um, I'm going to bring it up now. Just like on page 15 of the the subsection uh, Roman numeral four design guidelines, and uh, with a list of guidelines. Yeah, on it was on page 15 under the subtitle, yeah, I believe that's it, right? I have yeah. it. Yeah, so you say, possibly delete these guidelines. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 11, 13. How much is left? <laughs> you know? Well, that's because that would move, because that's already covered in the form-based code. That's all so in the form-based code, okay. Yeah. So those are the ones I was suggesting were already covered in the form-based code so that they don't need to be duplicated here or they don't need to be. It. So that was the converse, that was a discussion we were having earlier about making sure we're not creating duplication and that I would strip these out. So then you would see what it would be, what it would look like okay. once those are removed because they're already handled in a more clear and updated, graphically updated format in the form-based code. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the first 10 minutes. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah, yeah That's Bob, okay. Bob, I was saying at the beginning that as, as an architect that has to look at regulations like this, it's best to have things said once in one location and referred to so there's no duplication and confusion um, if, if it's slightly different from one document to the other. So uh, if it's covered in the form-based code, I think it makes sense to pull it out of our guideline. Yeah. No, I don't have a problem with that uh, because the form-based code is very specific, more than ours. So I can agree with that. So those are the ones where um, I, I think they're, it's covered, so we don't need to have them in the guideline. Mm -hmm. Was there um, another piece that you wanted to look at here, Alon? No, I, I didn't, I, I am seeing these red lines now. I, I guess I thought there was a lot more, like you had taken whole sections out already or red line through them. I did, uh, at the, uh, going way back three years ago now, this is Bridget Commons. I don't know if it was three, four, five years ago that we started this, but I did take a whole sort of analysis of, there was some stuff in there that was just dated. I mean, it's been 20 years now. We didn't have to dot every I and T about the rationale for why we're here. Because we're here. We've been here for 20 years. So I did take a, 
ton of stuff out at the top end. Um, but it wasn't um, it wasn't regulatory or it wasn't guidelines. So, so I, I have it, the oh go ahead. I was just gonna say, so I think it in terms of again, thinking of an applicant coming to the city, it would be helpful if it's noted in this guideline and in the form based code that when you're applying within this district, the Central Business Architecture Committee is going to be reviewing, um, you know, that you're meeting both the form based code as well as the additional guidelines in, in the Central Business Architecture Committee guidelines. Yeah, I will um, double check um, where, oh, here in the top paragraph, I added that. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see that, um, you know, when I resend it to you all. Okay. So you, you will strip this, excuse me, I'm sorry. Carol, are you going to then strip those out so we can see this, uh, the, the, the revised guidelines? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, I think that would be easier to go back and look at them and evaluate them that way. Okay. Could we just go through the table of contents and maybe kind of identify the things that would be coming? Just the, no, no, go back to where you were. That, that's, yeah, this here. So, yeah. so just going all the way up to the top, if we could just kind of go down. So the introduction will still stay, the, th the definitions would stay, or is that defined yeah. in the form based code? No, I think the definition should stay. Okay. And uh, applicability would stay. Yeah. yeah. And then the design guidelines, most of those things are in the form based code. Setbacks right. tight with, um, and then right. the, one, okay. you say, the things that aren't in there are facade materials, right? Right. right. Yeah, I think so I'm just gonna. You're gonna leave first floor facades, facade materials, and facade detail was gonna get left in, I believe. Yeah. Right. I'm just, yeah, and I'm, I'm just doing a quick mark just as a flag for me to go back and, and look at these things. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna... Can I just interrupt for one second? So there, an applicant will be going to planning first before they come to us. Is that correct? Um, the, the ideal situation would be a joint hearing, but otherwise, if not, it could be the applicant's choice, just as it is now. All right. Well, because, um, you know, in this situation, it, with, um, I'm just thinking in, in my own, you know, my own mind with, you know, current and past clients, um, you know, perhaps removing all of these things from our purview might, you know, they, um, I don't know, you know, we, we might approve something or, and then they go to planning and they get completely shot down where we might, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. We're not removing these things from our purview. They're just, there, there should be something that says, you know, in here referred to the form based code Okay. That's a better what definition. I wasn't. It does. And then in the form based code, it also says these buildings are going to be reviewed by central business architecture. These standards will be reviewed by central business architecture. Okay. I just, I'm sorry. I wasn't at the last meeting, so I don't know how. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So then, and then for the appendices, we can still keep this, but, um, I might put the list of buildings and the thumbnails in the appendices, um, as opposed to you know in the body of the of the guidelines. I think that makes sense. So, um, so roofs, the roofs are in the guidelines, aren't they? I mean, in the form based code. I think so. Yeah, I just haven't gone through and figured all okay. that out. So. Yeah. And and like Joe was saying, it. I don't know that. 
will you list these things and, and they'll just be a link that says, you know, see this section of the form based code? Yeah, that would yeah, be very I think that would it's be up very at the useful. top. Yeah. So no, all applicable. Uh, no, I it's mean, in this paragraph. Sorry, sorry, Carolyn. I mean specifically. Oh, like, okay. So for each of these, facts, see this link. Building height and width. See this link. Does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. Actually, that's a really good idea. I hadn't thought about that, but just keep these in here. What you're suggesting is keep these in here. But instead, put the link to yeah. twenty-two point whatever it comes exactly. out to be. Yeah, I think that would be okay. very good to do. I agree okay. with that. That'll I be helpful agree. to us as well when we're reviewing yeah. things. Okay, that'll be my note until I get back to it. <laughs> And that um, way it's, it's very clear what's in the form-based code and then it's clear what's actually in this document. Okay, yeah. But then you would take out all the subsections in our guidelines of those things and only have the, right. the reference. Right. 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 Yeah, good idea. Okay. So that'd be great if you send us sort of what you think will be the semi-final draft for our slim down guidelines. Yeah. And guidelines then, light. <laughs> right. Um, so you want to talk about the map? Yeah. So you said there were yes. some comments or it was reviewed and discussed. So yes, I mean, I, you know, this has been a long discussion, and every time we've expanded the Central Business District, there have been, you know, discussions about whether it makes sense to expand the guidelines to that extent. And we have, just because it's the only thing we had that was, you know, unique to downtown. Um, so the debate has been, you know, right along where do the guidelines make sense, where do they not make sense. Um, and the planning board had a pretty um, robust discussion about boundaries and I talked to them and I'm sorry about this map. I, I have our GIS person hasn't redone the map yet. So I wanna, and it fits better in this orientation on this screen, but it's, it's hard for me cause I always put North up. <laughs> so um, I have to look sideways at this, but um, so if you see like this is um, this is King Street and Pleasant Street here and um, whoops, let me just move this down and Main Street is oriented north south instead of east west. Um, so, you know, the um, I think your discussion last time was really about this section up here. Um, past the hotel. So this pink blob here, if you can see that, um, is the hotel. So that's in the core. So this heavy, this darkest pink is the core subdistrict or core district. Okay. And so then this can you explain exactly where that is? Because that I just like I'm just yep. like curious, literally I it, I like in it's in terms of like so this is the hotel I mean um that's the, the that's jutting out and then across, right here. yeah and then the, the a jut across the street with that that's like the big l that down l yep. that that's the all the records right and then, you know like three over that's in, that's like my dad's lot so right your dad's lot is way at the end of this like over here Oh, because that's the, the mall, that's the uh, like friendlies and all that. Okay, got it. All right. Right. So then this this is the bank. This is yeah. A to Z. Okay. And then I don't know um, what constitutes what. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just, yeah. And then up here, just to again get orientation, this is the block of Market Street where the roost is. So those buildings there. Um, and then across the street to. Um, 
on so this is divided by holly street this is the um Spoletos. um Spolet, the now Spoletto. <laughs> um and then you get the railroad tracks so everything on under the railroad tracks coming into downtown oh boy uh -oh. did you did this change it went black yeah it's black yeah black. is it back yeah it's just no. not responding we're not okay. responding I had to plug in my computer, so let me just start again. Sorry about that. We're so, all we're at each other, I think. <laughs> so what it's, happened to the discussion we had last time about extending that district, our district, a little further down past the hotel? And how okay. does that happen if we want to see that? What's the So, the, so the let me just, yeah, let me just um, describe that. First of all, let me just ask you, can you see the map again? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So this is the area that was you all were discussing last time. Um, what I was trying to say is, um, you know, it sounded like you were strong advocates um, generally as a group. You know, not everybody was present, but um, to extend the core boundary a little bit further up um, King Street. Joe suggested up to Allen Place, which is over here on the left side. So that's just past Ernie's garage. Um, and um, so, uh, you know, it, the planning board had this discussion. They heard your comments. Um, they are concerned because um, they feel like this part of King Street is a very different character. And it sort of highlights that tension between um, different among different people in the community about whether or not um, the core type of buildings should be expanded, meaning ground floor commercial, all the way up to you know make that a requirement, or whether the market can support that, and whether it's appropriate to try to continue to expand on that same historic core, the brick core of Main Street. Um, so I think that it, that your voices are part of that whole tension. And I don't know if uniformly, you didn't take a vote or anything about sort of as a committee, you don't necessarily need to take a vote unless you feel like you want to do that. Um, but um, certainly, I think it's going to be part of the public hearing conversation um, about how far up. And I think that it probably, I mean, we talked a lot about the, regist the, the registry of deeds building um, parcel being brought in because that's a big parcel and it sort of then would balance the hotel Northampton. And also having a commercial presence that close, you know, within a block of downtown that makes sense. Um, and it's really sort of beyond that where the character changes um, pretty dramatically. And there's a lot of concern about the fact that, um, you know, we need to create housing opportunities um, this close to downtown. And um, so that's another, that's a strong argument um, to keep the core boundary at the edge here. The standards for design are still gonna be there. The form is still gonna be um, required to be um, adhered to, but it would be reviewed by one board instead of two boards. And so that has an effect on, um, uh, developers and interest and concern about sort of what the regulatory hurdles might be in a review process. So it's both about use and also creating um, a um, an, um, sort of how we how the community wants to present itself for possible reinvestment and new investment. And, and so just just to be clear, the real difference between the two, the dark pink and the light pink, is that if you're in the dark pink area, you have to have some commercial component to the first floor level. Whereas outside of the dark pink, you don't need to have commercial components on the first floor, correct? Right, right. right. And so you still have to have the same massing, yet you don't have to have commercial 
on the first floor. Right. Right. Could someone choose to put commercial on the first floor if they wanted to? Oh yeah, it's allowed. It's just not mandated. Um, the other... And then also outside, so in the core, like I said before, new buildings would require a permit from both the planning board and the Central Business Architecture Committee, whereas outside the core, it would just be planning board. But the guidelines still, the standards, form-based code standards still apply. It just has more flexibility for that first floor use, that ground floor use. But it's also a big difference that we would not get to review something that was not in the core. So that according to this map, we would not get to review the replacement for the registry of deeds or what's going in Pat Guy. Lot. have the ability to um, grant a waiver for something in the core and allow residential on the first floor if um, uh, if we thought it was appropriate say for the registry or the Goggins lots do I need to repeat or would we not be able to do that no this is not a permit yeah. um, so the uh, first of all, no, only the zoning board can grant a, a waiver, which would be a variance for use. Um, but the idea is about the core is that historic theme commercial brick, you know, um, presence close up to the street. That's what sort of the core um, theme is. And so, um, I, but I think, I think that it makes sense. And I, and again, I didn't make, our GIS person hasn't had a chance to update the map, but I think it absolutely makes sense to, um, and I, the planning board had no problem either. They thought it made sense to put the registry parcel in there. So 33 King Street, bring that in. So expand the line to the other side of Merrick Lane and, um, you know, have that expansion here. Um, uh, and um, that would sort of bring with it all, all the aspects of the core and that sort of then closes that hole a little bit and um, starts that sort of that's the center of Northampton um, coming in from King Street. I do, I do so, think that that's important that the Hall of Records be there to balance. I mean, the Hotel Northampton is such a significant building in downtown Northampton, and that I, I think uh, what goes across the street from that it is important. Okay. I yeah, have I, a think, question, I think. Question, Carolyn. Yeah. Just as we're talking about, you know, the the light pink zone and the dark pink zone, um, just to be just to be super clear. So the light pink zone, somebody is building a building on one of those parcels that falls under the planning board's jurisdiction, and they will be reviewing the architectural facades of those buildings now, assuming that the form-based code is approved. Is that right? Correct. And then if someone were building a new building or doing a significant renovation in the dark pink zone, then both the CBAC and the planning board would be reviewing the architectural components based on the form-based code. Is that right? Yeah. If it's a new building or significant expansion of a building, yes, then it would be two boards. Got it. And that is why there's mention in the new form based code, or I think I saw mention that maybe we would have those reviews together. Is yeah. That, mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, and then just to sort of add on to to that, the whole the whole idea of being very specific, and you guys were talking about this, but Bob mentioned this, that much more detailed and specific about what's required in that form-based um, code section was so that 
for two reasons. One, that any applicant was clear about what's required in terms of designing buildings. And two, that the boards were very, were able to also um, use that same thing and evaluate it so that it's um, not as um, nebulous as it um, potentially ex is in ex existing conditions that the Central Business Architecture Committee looks at. So, you know, with all that, these comments, perhaps the form based code, which um, I'm assuming might turn to a character based code because I'm reading that throughout. But let's just say maybe there should be a, a clear distinction between the two, just as it is in this map, but the form based code should separate it because even when we were looking at it, we were saying, you know, page. 60 through you know 86 is basically our section and then it jumped to another another area so maybe that's how can it be can the form based code be written in those terms or um well it is set up that way so the, the generally sort of the umbrella theme of a form-based code is that you have these character districts. And so um, because we, but uh, so we're defining these character districts by these three separate types of central business zoning. Um, so we have the central business core versus central business side street. And so that the side street has a slightly different character characteristic, meaning buildings are uh, might be set back a little bit further there um there may be other elements that come into the space between the sidewalk and the building um that are not the same as what you'd have on main street where buildings you know there's hardscape from the street to the building front um, so those are the kinds of different characteristics that are identified in each of these sub districts mm -hmm. and then when the more and more we read them we'll familiarize ourselves it'll be easy to um navigate probably in time hopefully <laughs> <laughs> could um i'd uh i would actually like to make a motion that the architecture committee recommend that the core extend up to Al to allen place um, I feel it is so close to Main Street that um, anything new that happens there as, as time goes on should um, have a similar character to what is in the core district. Um, obviously, I feel most strongly that the registry building needs to be in the core, but I really like to see what replaces Pat Goggins building also be in the core. I don't think, I think limiting it, limited, limiting it to Allen Place doesn't um, put too great a, uh, a, a burden on restricting change. I know if, if we tried to go all the way up to, to Fifth Street, you know, that uh, would, but, uh, uh, I really, I think it's so close to Main Street that we re we really need to try, and uh, as things ch as buildings change over time, we want that whole area to match the rest of downtown and not uh, have a chance to go in a very different direction. Um, so I, I'd like to uh, to move that we recommend extending the core up to Allen Place on both sides of King Street. I guess I'd like to open that up to discussion um, to hear what other folks think about that. And, and I guess I'm gonna put a, a counterpoint to that, just that um, the, any new building that is built in that light pink area still meet, needs to meet the form base code and have the same character. It's just that they do not, they're not required to have commercial on the first floor, but they can have commercial. Right. My my main point for doing this is I feel that it needs a board that specifically looks out for the aesthetics of the buildings, which we are and which the planning board is not. 
So Carolyn, do I need to recruit myself? I probably do, right? No. 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 It doesn't have anything to do with your building per se. You're looking, this is policy, it's legislative. So um but it, affects, can, it affects the building. Not necessarily. I mean, it's a conversation. I mean, Joe's putting that out there. Alan Place actually, you know, your so, father's property is north of that anyway. So stop. Um, well, I, I, stop in that me. case, I'd want to I'd want to have my motion include that property is the northern boundary of the of the core zone so okay. just to clarify you you're evaluating a legislative decision not a permit so um this you're you don't need to recuse yourself on this it's also the board the committee's not the one making the decision if the committee makes a recommendation it would go to the planning board and city council um but i the so I don't, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I also just want to throw out there that it's unclear how this portion of King Street would be any different from any of this whole section along Center Street and out to State Street. So I think you should think about what the rationale would be to extend sort of the Main Street character up King Street and not also include this whole chunk here along Center Street um, and so forth. So that's just another, I mean, that's just another way to look at it, so. Well, didn't you say that the planning board already reviewed this idea and that they're not into it? I mean, they're gonna be voting on it and city council, right? So, I mean, our vote would only be a recommendation which is already sounds like it's been put down, right, Carol? Well, um, so your no until the city council adopts this, there's no single body that has, um, you know, that's going to make a decision at this point. Yes, the planning board discussed this. Yes, they feel very strongly that. Um, it's important to have one one that that more than one board reviewing things puts a chilling effect on development um, it, and investment, and that this is a different character. They feel um, they're also again they have design capacity on the planning board, so they're they're not without that strength. Um, but primarily because it's so important from the planning board's perspective to allow that flexibility of residential use on the ground floor, a little bit of setback, but still using the same form based code requirements for the building components. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where they, that's that. So yes, Bob, you're right. The planning board um, disagreed with, um, you know, what Joe was recommending and what some other members were sort of interested in pursuing a little bit further. Um, but all of this, you know, conversation certainly is going to move forward. The council is going to hear that there are members of central business that, you know, have concerns about the map as it's drawn. Um, so, but that's the nature of it. I mean, there's going to be a lot of debate about, about where the boundaries are. Um, because it all, as I said before, it's mirrored sort of that um, constant tension between whether or not we really should be trying to expand the main street character throughout downtown or how far throughout downtown, meaning, you know, that building right up to the sidewalk and ground floor commercial, that in brick um, building materials and that kind of thing. So um, before we leave this topic of the where the boundaries are, one of the properties that I think maybe should be included, I think was and should be included again, is um, the antique store on the corner of Polly and, and uh, I guess it's Bridge at that point. That intersection um, to me is a sort of a, a gateway intersection. 
um, you know, across the street from Spoleto's, but before you get to the post office. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the reason that um, the Hall of Records and um, the Hotel Northampton, I guess I kind of think of, you know, a, a gateway and sort of it being balanced on, on both sides to a point and then there's a transition. And when one side of the street is, some, is something and the other side of the street is not something, there's imbalance in that, um, in, in your feeling of place. That's my opinion. Do people know what lot I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Here, at this one right here. See my arrow. Because I think the district in most places, it straddles both sides of the street. But practically speaking, that corner is very an anomaly. I mean, you got Spoletto's on one side and, and the, the antique store and they're total anomaly buildings. Um, right. And then, and where do you stop, it. you know? It's like, where does it stop? You can keep saying that every time you add another little piece to the district, you know? Well, well so the Spoleto's lot is included. So I guess, you know, if we don't feel like that intersection should be part of central business, why include Spoleto's, that corner? Maybe you're right there, yeah. To me, it, it is, I think it's a significant corner. Hmm. So would you want to amend my motion to include that parcel? Um, I think that the it should include the Hall of Records and that parcel, but I'm not convinced we need to go down to Allen Place because of the architecture that is there currently. Um, and knowing that the form-based code would continue in that area, but not necessarily have to have commercial um, and knowing that commercial uh, spaces are having a very difficult time. The way that we um, live in our downtown now has changed dramatically, not just in the last two years, but really in the last decade. And uh, I, I am concerned about empty storefronts. So that's, that's, that's my concern about extending it all the way down to Allen Place or even further. Even though there's commercial there, um, we have a lot of empty storefronts well, in the central we're, business we're, district. This is about this is about long-term planning more than the content than the current problem of empty storefronts. But let me ask: Is does the planning board already on board with the idea of including the Hall of Records in the court? Carol? Yes. They were, yes. Because mm -hmm. um, if, um, if, if, if other people feel that that's the only thing that needs to be added to the core and maybe the, the antique store, then we don't really need my motion because it's um, uh, gonna happen anyway. But I, um, uh, but if, uh, I don't know, if somebody wants to second my motion, we could talk more about it. If not, maybe we should just let it go. Well, our vote on this is really just a recommendation. That's it, correct. It doesn't hold any weight at all. Right, but it, it makes sure that the discussion's gonna happen about what the boundaries should really be in the long run. So I, I guess I'd like to open it up to the other board members. Joe and I have kind of put our ideas forth. I'm curious other board members feel about the boundaries. Well, I wouldn't be opposed to pushing it to Allen Place, but if it doesn't pass, I can be satisfied with just having the whole records in the district. I mean, I could recommend going to Allen Place if, if you thought it would go through the planning board. Um, as far as the um, antique store and that, I mean, the concept here is the fact that if that ever building gets destroyed, the replacement would fall into this. But 
frankly, I don't see in our lifetimes those building that building being changed unless it burns down or something. You know, so is it necessary at this point to put that into the district? The other thing that does keeping it out of the district is if those um, if retail was no longer viable on the first floor there, it could, you know, if you could make building code compliant, it could convert to residential. Mm -hmm. What about, and so, keep going. I was just gonna say, so to sort of think about um, that um, public interface with pedestrians, it does it make sense to sort of create that strong corner all around where you've got pedestrian um, activity that's drawn to that corner because of the retail? Um, or does that, and, and so to Alan's point, um, sort of making a core, a, a full intersection, a strong intersection there as a commercial presence and gateway into, you know, downtown. Um, so that's the way to think about it, whether, you know, not just whether the building burns down or gets struck by a tornado or whatever. Um, also, I, I agree with that. The two recently highlighted plot, uh, plots of land, I think, or uh, lots, um, I'm thinking that if, if you say that the, the pink zones are allowed to, if uh, a developer is allowed to have commercial or not have commercial, can we add a clause in our guidelines saying the same thing that, you know, since we understand the history and how, how we're trying to expand the CBAC district, and if those two do get into it, do we have the authority to just make it residential if we de deem it like a, a somewhat of an economic hardship on the developer? No. You, you don't have the jurisdiction to do that. Only the zoning board can do that. So, yeah. Or alternatively, you know, the map could change. So in 10 years, if it doesn't make sense that we're required, let's say the map goes forward with these two red areas modified for core. And maybe the antique store doesn't make sense anymore as retail. It's really continued to shrink as it's been doing for 20 years. Um, you know, um, we could do a map adjustment. You know, that would be the that would be the path forward if it really made no more. Um, it wasn't feasible anymore to have commercial on the first floor. The path would be a rezoning, which isn't out of the questions, but that's that's. Um, that would be the path instead of a waiver or a variance from the zoning board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in favor of including those two lots as a part of the central business district. I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, as far as expanding further down King Street, I think given the new uh, form based codes that we've been looking at, they're they're pretty strict. And I feel like if those can be followed pretty um, pretty closely, then I think that the, that new development on King Street could be in keeping with um, some of the design features that, that we're trying to preserve downtown. We could, couldn't we also modify Joe's motion to say that we encourage the Hall of Records and the antique store to be included in the district, but we also would like to enlarge the district to Allen Place. In other words, we are much more heavily in favor of those two smaller areas, but we would like to see the district because it's gonna go to them and the council anyway. So we could just add put that is in as a caveat that we would like to see it go a little further. Is that a yes, way we, have, we haven't heard from Bridget yet. I'd like to hear what Bridget thinks. 
I'm recusing myself. On, on both lots. I'm sorry? Uh, on both lots? Yes. You don't think either anything should be added? I, I just, I, I just, I, I have um, obviously have, have uh, interest on the King Street issue and also uh, Holly Street issue. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm just afraid. Um, I, I don't want to, I just don't want to step over the line. So I just, I, I, okay. I don't know. I just, you know, we, we've taken all these classes on everything else. I just think that I should probably step off if people don't mind. Okay. All right. Thank well, you. let me, re let me revise my motion to say that we strongly recommend that the registry building plus the antique store be added to the core and recommend that the city council consider um, as a lesser recommendation, the extending on both the sides of King Street up to Allen Place and the Goggins lot. Okay, great. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon. Well, I would, I would second that motion. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's a way to approach it. Uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Bob Walker. Aye. So Melissa, I, Joe, I, Bob, I, Emily. I, I don't feel strongly about making the recommendation to extend down King Street. I, I also do not feel strongly about that. So I don't know how you can. Um... <laughs> well, we... here's another here's another approach. You don't necessarily have to make any kind of recommendation now. Here's what I would propose to do: is just go ahead and before it gets introduced to council, make the map changes for these two parcels. I don't really think that. I, I mean, I think that what you have been discussing makes sense. The planning board certainly already talked about the registry building and they're, they feel they're, they're supportive of that too. So I, you know, I don't, I, I um, feel completely comfortable with just making the map change before it even gets introduced to council. And then when it does get introduced to council, you know, people can certainly come and talk about, um, you know, whether or not the map in its in that then current version makes sense. I'm comfortable with that. So I'll withdraw okay. the motion. Thanks, okay. Carolyn. Sure. All right. I think we made some progress tonight. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate you guys working on this and providing feedback it's really helpful and it's i know it's can be really tedious <laughs> to go through this um but it's definitely um I hope you felt like it was a good exercise and uh, no i think the form based code is gonna be uh really helpful and i like how it tightens up our guidelines um i look forward to seeing how it how it actually works in reality yeah. Um, I feel like. All right. I could make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Actually, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Melissa has something. Go ahead, Melissa. Um, it might just be me, but whenever I go through this, like if I look at the zoning bylaws and things like that, it just reads flat, like you, you know, you're reading the laws, so they're they're flat. And I have a smaller computer, but when I go through this, and I know it would be so much work, but you know, you highlight the whole thing, and then they created two columns because I I go down all the way down on one side, then I have to go all the way up again, and then down again, and it would just read so much better, in in my opinion. I just want to see if anybody else thinks that if they you know if you read a lot of zone. Uh, if you read a lot of standards and things, would it make sense to make it on one line? I mean, straight across, not not two columns, but 
So I think it was, I can check with the consultants. I think it's because of the graphics. Um, I know that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can see how. And then I think you're be right adjusted. because I'm looking at another page, like page 65 reads straight across and it has some graphics, but it's a larger size graphic. And I think it just fit well because they had the thumb, the thumbnail graphics in there. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just so much better for when there's not uh, two columns. Yeah, I yeah. tend to agree, especially if you're doing it all online. It's it's a lot easier to than in hard copy, you know. But that's I don't know if we have much say in that. Yeah. I'll see what they have to say about sort of formatting in a way that, I mean, we, we started out this process sort of wanting to make sure that it did work digitally because that's the way it is, you know, and we want to make sure it's easy for people to use. So I guess we need to probably run through again to see how that works. But thank you. appreciate that. All right. Any, any further comments for tonight? and or a motion to adjourn. There's a motion on the table to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> that was everyone, unanimous. All right, so we're uh, next meeting March, what is it? First. March 1st. Yeah, yeah. so a couple weeks. See you then. <laughs>